Do you think you understand enough settings about dynamics? Okay, don't go further. Just check this tutorial. Hi, this is Joseph from Joe Concepts. Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at dynamic settings and look at everything that there is to it. Um, well, not everything really, but this is a two-part tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're just going to look at some basic settings about dynamics. But before we go into the tutorial, I would like to say you should please like my videos and share it because it helps me and if you are new to this channel please do subscribe to this channel because i do a lot of tutorials just like this so without further ado let's get into the tutorial all right so what we're going to do is we're going to create a plane object and this i'm going to scale this up so this plane object is going to be my floor so let me rename this this is going to be floor and i'm going to let's start with very simple objects where um cube and bring this cube up so this cube is going to be the object I'm going to be adding the dynamics to. So now, what happens? If I select the cube and right click here, go to new tag and go to simulation tag, add a rigid body to this. If I play this, it falls and just falls down. And the reason why this is happening is because we need to add a tag to this for it to interact with that cube. So, so what we're going to select the floor, right click, go to new tags, simulation tag and add a collider body to this. So if we play this now, you are going to notice that this falls and collides with this object. Alright, so if we move this up and play, notice it collides and you have that. So let's look at what we have. So if you look at this cube, <coughs> sorry about that. If you check the rigid body tag or dynamic body rigid body tag, you have some of these um, yeah, tabs. Yeah? But let's start working away from here. So the dynamic tab has, the basic just really has the name and all that. So the dynamic is where the main thing starts from. So enabling will either enable or disable the dynamics. So just like the previous tutorial where I talked about spline dynamics, you can also enable it uh, or not. So you have that. Then if you look at this trigger coming down here, the trigger is set to start the dynamics immediately. So that means that is why you're having this fall immediately you play. But you can also change this to on collision. All right. So what this on collision does is that if you play, nothing happens. And the reason why nothing will happen is because the object is looking for something to interact with it. So if I bring this sphere, if I create a sphere object and bring it here, and keyframe this sphere here from here, and move into this and bring this close to this, so just touching this object slightly. If I play, nothing will happen still and the reason is because i need to also add a tag to this for it to interact so i'm going to add a collider body tag and if you play this now you notice that this falls because something interacts with it so that is where this on collision comes to play so i'm going to delete that so let's take this back to immediately then you all have your custom initial velocity so what custom initial velocity does is just to add an initial velocity to this object so you can actually add um, a velocity to this object that a force that pushes this object at a particular direction which gives it initial velocity so if you activate this this comes up so you have two options, initial linear velocity and initial angular velocity. So let's assume we want to have an initial velocity on this object, pushing it towards the z-axis. So if you check this, you have three fields. You have your x, y, and z. Don't forget, the first one is the x direction, y direction, and the z direction. So let's assume we want to push it towards the z direction. Let's start increasing this value. So I want to give it initial distance of 200 centimeters by play. Notice it falls and also moves forward along this. And this is because the distance is that too small. So if we bring this to, let's say, 800 and play, it goes more. 
all right so that is what so you can actually use this to create a very interesting animation where maybe you want to simulate bullets or something thrown you can see that something thrown towards the direction so you also have your initial angular velocity so if you change this value and see notice that it rotates so that is what the angular velocity does so if i just increase these values and play and notice what happens all right so that is just for you to see what these values what they do so notice it rotates as it goes so it has an initial angular velocity so that is there okay so that is what that does so i'm going to uncheck that then what i also what you also need um is coming to the collision section now under this collision section you have your inherit type we're going to talk about this later um this comes in handy when you have um a cloned object and also this so then you can you also have a self collision and also shape now so this shape is set automatically to be um by default to be automatic from research i discovered that um automatic doesn't really give you uh, an accurate result so but either of these two comes in handy. So if your object is going to be a moving object, that is better. If it's going to be static object, that is fine. So notice as I change this to static, nothing happens. It stays. Change this to moving object, it starts falling. And this simulates better than the automatic. All right. So there you have your bounce. <clears throat> now the bounce is what determine how this thing bounces up and down you notice this bounce effect so the reason why you are not seeing enough of this bounce is because of the percentage so if we increase this percentage to less than 100 you notice what happens so we start bouncing and if we increase this time to less than 500 you notice it continue bouncing and bouncing until it's comes to a halt which possibly might be infinite <laughs> so okay i think we have that so that is what that bounce does then you have your friction so the friction is more like the degree at which the object slides okay so if so how you use this friction is you use it counteractive to the bounce and all that so if you're having bounce then if you bring this friction down the rate at which the bounce has effect is more you understand that so then if you want to have more friction that means you have to reduce your bounce and increase your friction so let's say we want to make this 200 and if you play it just stays and it doesn't so where do you really see this friction if i bring this object and rotate if you remember in the previous tutorial If I play this, okay, notice it sticks. The reason is because our friction is that high. So if we bring this zero and bring the friction to zero also and play, notice what happens, it slides down because there's no friction between the object. There's no friction between the um, rigid object and the floor, which is the collider object so as soon as you start introducing friction you start seeing that the rate at which slides gets reduced so at 50 it slides a little bit and stops so if we bring this to let's say 20 slides more than 50 so this is here for you to so you notice this is more like 500 and space if i make this 5000 just this and nothing more all right so that is what that does so let's uh, bring this back to the default which is 90 okay then you have your mass so what this mass does is to give a custom mass to your objects 
that is what it does so if you want to give um, a custom value you can so by default it's making use of word math so it's just calculating things so you can also use custom density or custom mass where you can put in mass to this object so this mass will determine how heavy the object is going to be or how light the object is going to be so by default you have 10 so to make this one uh, you have that notice it doesn't really you don't really see so let's introduce a little bit of balance to this so notice we don't really have bounce so if, if, I, if i crank this up to um sorry 20. notice we have a little bit of bounce even at 20 for less mass so if we bring this mass to 10 notice what happens see the effect there it shows more weight compared to when you have 0.1 just notice that compared to when you have this okay so that is there for you so i'm going to take this back to this then you have your force so this force is what will determine um where you add some um what do you call it you have some you add some force just like in the previous tutorial you can also add forces to this so if you go to the simulate and go to forces you have some forces which you can add so for instance if i want to add um, a wind force to this and bring this wind here if you play nothing happens okay yeah force that getting introduced to that but what i usually like doing is i like excluding i like changing this to include so that i will manually put in the force that i want all right now the wind is not having effect but all i know all i need to do is just drag this wind over to this place and the wind pushes this a little bit so how can we add more effect of this wind that can be done in your wind object and increasing the speed so if you increase the speed to more like 20 so you notice it pushes this object you can also add turbulence to that so maybe we want to add 20 percent turbulence okay so we can bring this back to 500 so we'll have more time to so you have that you can already see what is happening then if you go back to the wind so you have um you can increase your turbulence and turbulence frequency then also increase the speed so maybe we want the speed to be 200 so you notice what happens i think that was too much 80 you notice what happens so you can use that to simulate this so you can see it keeps bouncing and bouncing and just comes until it goes all right so you see it going there so that's how you do that so i'm going to get rid of this then you have a soft body we are not talking about soft body today so we're going to talk about that later then the follow position i'm also going to talk about that when i talk about adding dynamics to um cloner objects then for this aerodynamics um <clears throat> if you add drag to this the rate at which the um dynamic if affects this object is um slowed down so compared to when you have nothing so if you bring this notice that if i bring this drag up to let's say 80 and see what happens then we can also add lift to this so if we bring this lift to this notice it comes down a little bit so we bring this to 1000 so it comes down here just a little bit it doesn't really see what is happening so bringing this drag to this and that so you can work with this and the higher the value the less it comes the less the time it comes down so you can use this to simulate more 
like um, uh, a very uh, how do I put it a light object more like feather and all that so you can just do that so bring this back to zero of course and I think I'm going to stop this tutorial here and in the next tutorial I'm going to talk about adding dynamics to cloner objects and see what other settings we can do to that so if this was helpful please give me a like and thumbs up and help me share this video because it helps me a lot and if you're new to this channel please do subscribe because i make similar tutorials to this so do have a wonderful day and god bless you bye